every election cycle you hear that the key for Democrats is young voters, that there will be an explosion of young voters. And most years that promise falls short. But we began to see things a little bit different this year in the primary. And so will it carry over to November? My guest says yes. Joining me now is Carly Cass, the Florida State Youth Director for Next Gen America. Carly, thank you very much for coming in. Thanks for having me. So do you disagree with my premise every year in election cycles we hear, oh, it's the youth vote's going to turn out, they're going to turn out, they're going to turn out. And then except for a couple of Obama elections, they really don't turn out. But we saw something different in the primary for Andrew Gillum, didn't we? We saw something different for the primary. I think what's different about this election cycle is that millennials are the largest voting bloc in the country. They're the largest voting bloc, but they aren't, they're usually the worst performing voting bloc by tradition, young voters. Not necessarily millennials, but young voters. What's different this time? What's, what's energizing them? Oh, I think there's so many things energizing young voters, and I think we've seen a tremendous spike in young people caring about politics and really, you know, waking up and seeing, I can make a difference, my voice makes a difference. And I think what we've seen on the ground since we started is talking to young people about the issues and connecting those issues directly to the, their elected officials and making sure that they understand that these issues, there's a correlation and they need to hold them accountable. So Next Gen America is the group that was helped organize, funded by Tom Steyer. Yes. Uh, and so he has invested in Florida heavily, I know, coming into this. I think at one point he had 50 staffers. He or Next Gen had 50 staffers here, then it was up over 100. Give me an idea of how many staffers, paid staffers are on the ground, how many do you anticipate between now and November, and what will they be doing? Sure, so we ramped up uh, in early August. So we have over 120 staffers on the ground, and we'll continue that through November. Um, we're super excited. We're on 43 college campuses across the state, uh, covering you know majority of the counties in Florida, um, and we are, we're fired up and ready to go. And it's not just about the governor's race. You're looking at other other issues as well, the congressional races, some of the ballot issues, I imagine. Sure. So we're focusing on four congressional districts, um, seven, which is Orlando, um, 18, which is St. Lucie, and a little bit of Palm Beach County, 26 and 27 that are in Miami. Um, but we are also encouraging young people to look at not only the top of the ticket, but everyone down to, you know, soil and water commissioner, right? And then we have, of course, a ton of amendments on the ballot this uh, cycle, and we're really excited excited to support Amendment 4 particularly. What do you think is different though about now as opposed to the past in terms of getting young people energized? I mean, you say they're more interested in politics. Is it just because it's so prevalent on TV, so much part of the culture? Or what is it? Are they unhappy? Are they riled up? Where, where are they coming from? Well, I think, you know, we grew up with Obama in the White House, and I, I will say that I think that Trump has been an awakening for our generation, and we are of the age where we are, you know, young professionals, we're paying taxes, we're buying homes, and we see there needs to be change in our communities, and we're ready to voice our opinion on what those changes need to be. Uh, and in the governor's race, in the primary, in the Democratic side, it looked as if Andrew Gillum, part of his success was getting voters who had never voted before. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much of that was through new voter registration or how much of that was just getting folks who were registered to finally come out. Do you have a sense for it and, and what do you see going forward? Is it registering new people or just getting those who are registered going? I think it's both. We were really um, excited about Andrew and the governor's race. So pre-primary uh, voter registration deadline, which is in the middle of July, we were able to register about 19,000 uh, young people between the ages of 18 and 35. And then after the primary voter registration deadline, Line, we were able to push those 19,000 young people to the polls. And I think that we're going to see a same situation in the general election. Do you have some projections as to what you're hoping to register? Any goals before the registration period closes for the November election? Sure. So uh, since the primary, um, which was last week, two weeks ago at this point. Yeah. Wow. I've lost track. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then no, October 9th, which is the voter registration deadline, we're hoping to register 20,000 more young people. And then after October 9th, it's full on get to the the polls. Um, early voting will start soon after. We're going to do a huge uh, shuttle program on all of our college campuses and then um, anything we can, non-traditional events to get young people to the polls. It's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> you think this is fun. This is this is fun. Why? So talk to me about that. You know, I think something that um, we're able to do is talk to young people and, and meet them where they're at. So we are having barbecues. We're going to football tailgates. We're um, having 
events that are non-traditional, right? They're not your candidate forums where we're talking to young people about the issues they care about. We're talking about climate change. We're talking about health care. And we're correlating that directly to, hey, if you care about these issues, you got to go to the polls in November. You, you mentioned health care. A lot of people tend to think that, that the issue of health care resonates more with older voters mm -hmm. than necessarily with younger voters. There's a view that young people don't think in terms of health care because they're young, they're healthy, they, they worry, they think that that's something that they'll have down the line. But do you think health care is an issue for young people? Absolutely. I mean, I, personally, my mother has a pre-existing condition, so the AC is very important to me. Um, what I will say is we do survey across all of our college campuses, and we have a list of, of issues, whether it be you know medical marijuana, reproductive health care, climate change, gun safety. And what we found time and time again is that the key issues are climate, access to health care, affordable health care. Obviously, we're on college campuses, so cost of college um, are, are the top issues. What about uh, gun violence and the, and the whole issue surrounding the NRA and, and what we saw with Parkland? Yes, I mean, that's also a top issue, right? And I think one of the reasons we were so excited to support Andrew uh, from the start was that he has been proven uh, to go against the NRA and support the repeal of Stand Your Ground and support safer schools, uh, which is something our generation ha needs. Is there a fear? Do you get a sense that, 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 that young people realize that this is an issue? Shootings on, on, on high school campuses, college campuses, those that we saw in Virginia Tech, is that an issue? Absolutely. I mean, I graduated from high school 10 years ago, and the high school I graduated from had a shooting at a football game three weeks ago, and it shook me, right? So I think we're seeing this is not only an issue for current students, but past students. Carly, I really appreciate your coming in. I'm sure we'll be talking more as we get closer to November. Next Gen is, uh, if people want to find you on the website, where do they go? www.nextgenamerica.org. Nextgenamerica.org. All right, thank you very much. We'll be right back after the break.